In part one of this video, we talked about the impact of progressive marginal income taxes and proportional taxes on the amount of tax paid and the average tax rates of three hypothetical individuals who you can see on our left here. In part two of this video, we're going to go on to the third type of tax system that a country may use, which is a consumption tax, sometimes called a value-added tax or a sales tax. As we're going to see, consumption taxes tend to be regressive rather than progressive or proportional, meaning that they place a larger burden on the people with the lower levels of income and a lower burden on people with higher levels of income. To illustrate this, we're going to go back to the three hypothetical individuals that we examined in the first part of this video. Remember from part one of our video that the assumption is that the higher an individual's income, the smaller proportion of his income that he must use to consume with. This is because the basic necessities are covered more easily and higher income individuals are able to save a large proportion of their income. So individual A, who we started with, earns $15,000 per year and spends 80% of that income. To determine how much individual A spends on goods and services, we must simply find 80% of 15000 Individual A consumes $12,000 worth of goods and services per year. Individual B, let's calculate how much individual B consumes per year. Individual B's income of $30,000, 70% is spent on goods and services, so we can multiply that by 0 0.7, and we see that individual B consumes $21,000 worth of goods and services per year. Individual C, on the other hand, consumes 60% of her income, so $60,000 times 0 0.6. Individual C consumes $36,000 worth of goods and services per year. Clearly, the richer individuals consume more than the poorer individuals. This is not a surprise. What is important, however, is that the proportion of income spent on consumption decreases as income increases, as we can see here. Now let's calculate the amount of tax that will be paid on consumption by each of these three individuals and then determine the average tax rate paid by each individual. Let's start with individual A again. Individual A spends $12,000 in goods and services and must pay a 10% tax on that consumption. So to calculate the amount of tax paid, we simply multiply the $12,000 by the consumption tax rate, which is 10%, 0 0.1, gives us a tax burden of $1,200 on individual A. Individual B's tax will be $21,000 times 0 0.1, which is $2,100. And individual C spends $36,000 on goods and services at a tax rate of 10%. Individual C will spend $3,600 in taxes. So as I said before, Consumption taxes tend to be regressive, but that seems to not be supported by the calculations here because, as you can see, individual C, who earns the most, spends the most in taxes, almost three times as much as individual A. However, this does not take into account the average tax rate. Using the same calculation we did in part one of this video, we can find out how much the individuals spend in taxes on average by dividing their tax paid by their income. This will give us the average tax rate. For individual A, who spends $1,200 in taxes on $12,000 of consumption, we divide that by individual A's income of $15,000, and we get an average tax rate of 0.08, which, when converted to a percentage, is an average tax rate of 8%. We can now add that to our table over here and move on to calculate the average tax rate for individual B. Individual B will pay $2,100 in taxes on an income of $30,000. This gives individual B an average tax rate of 7%. Moving on to individual C, we can see that the total amount of tax paid is $3,600 on an income of $60,000, giving this individual an average tax rate of 6%. Let's move over to our table here. We did determine that the amount of tax paid by each individual goes up as the income goes up. Individual A would pay $1,200 in taxes. Individual B would pay $2,100 in taxes. And individual C would pay $3,600 in taxes. However, this does not take into account the impact that the tax has on the 
individual's overall income as a percentage. A consumption tax is a regressive tax, meaning that the higher income individuals will pay a lower percentage of their income in tax than the lower income individuals. In the final part of this video, we're going to look at the impact that progressive income taxes, proportional income taxes, and regressive consumption taxes will have on the income distribution in a country. Here we have a Lorenz curve. This is a model that was introduced in an earlier video lecture. As you may recall, the further away a Lorenz curve is from the line that we call the line of equality, the greater the level of income inequality in society. So let's assume that our green Lorenz curve here, we'll call that A, is our hypothetical country's Lorenz curve before any change in the tax system. The question we want to examine is what impact will each of the three tax systems have on the level of income inequality in this country? Let's first look at the progressive income tax. Then we'll look at the proportional income tax. And finally, we'll look at the regressive consumption tax. A progressive income tax places a larger burden on people with higher incomes than it does on people with lower incomes. Such a tax system will therefore reduce the after-tax incomes of the richest people in society, leaving them with a smaller proportion of the total income earned in society. For example, let's say that the top 20% pay much higher taxes than the bottom 20%. This will leave the top quintile of the population with less disposable income than they had before the progressive tax was implemented. For example, in this case, the top 20% might be left with just 40% of the income after the progressive tax, whereas before the progressive tax, they had more like 55% of the disposable income. Such a tax would move the Lorenz curve closer to the line of equality. And also, since the lowest income people pay the least amount of tax, the share of income earned by them after the tax would increase, in this case, from 5% to, hypothetically, 10%. A Lorenz curve will move closer to the line of equality as a result of the implementation of a progressive income tax system. A proportional income tax places no disproportionate burden on high-income individuals compared to low-income individuals. Therefore, a proportional income tax will have no impact on the Lorenz curve. A regressive consumption tax, which places a smaller burden on people with higher incomes than it does on people with lower incomes, will have the opposite effect as the progressive tax. It will ultimately leave the richest people in society with more disposable income since they're only paying taxes on the goods that they consume and since they tend to consume a smaller proportion of their income than people with lower incomes. Therefore, the regressive tax will tend to move the Lorenz curve further away from the line of equality, creating more unequal income distribution in society. This concludes our analysis of the impact of different tax systems on income distribution in a country. Let's recap quickly. First, we learned how to calculate the effects of a marginal progressive tax system on three hypothetical individuals by determining the amount of tax they would pay at different income levels and the average tax rate. And as we saw, the average tax rate increased as income increased. Next, we showed that a proportional income tax places no disproportionate burden on high income individuals compared to low, and that every individual in society will pay the same percentage on average in tax in terms of their income. Finally, we showed that a regressive consumption tax actually places a smaller burden on people with higher incomes due to the fact that they consume a smaller proportion of their income. We concluded by analyzing the impact of the three tax systems on the level of income inequality in a country using a Lorenz curve. As we see, the red Lorenz curve shows the impact of a progressive income tax reducing inequality. The green Lorenz curve showed the impact of a proportional in income tax, which has no impact on inequality. And the blue Lorenz curve shows the impact of a regressive consumption tax, which actually increases the level of income inequality in society due to the fact that it places a disproportionately large burden on lower income households.